Hey you guys, welcome back. Or if you're new here, my name is Jill and I'm the homeschool mom to a fifth grader. This is our second year of homeschooling and we homeschool specifically to learn a foreign language. On top of that, we're doing all the other stuff. We had a large change in one of our topics, which is grammar. And I think it's really easy to come across on YouTube as a homeschool mom who flips curriculum like a pancake just over and over and this and that. And it's really easy to, to see us in this bubble and you don't see the, the slow, long trajectory towards change. <laughs> you just get one video in the next video. So I, I really wanna explain and follow up on how we are doing with the new curriculum throughout the year. And also to be real clear that we like, we like and love the curriculum that we are having to leave behind. We are leaving behind both Fix-It Grammar and The Well-Trained Mind. And The Well-Trained Mind was, a, The Fix-It Grammar was a no-brainer for me and the well-trained mind was a really tough pill to swallow to say we couldn't do it anymore. And here's why. We like both. Fix-it grammar, we were using it for the vocabulary as well. And when I tested Morgan at the end of the year, her vocabulary had increased exponentially from the beginning of fourth grade to the end of fourth grade. So I realized I either need to add something more, uh, like a vocabulary curriculum, to then keep fix-it grammar. But then we're doing vocabulary curriculum and then two uh, grammar courses. And I, I just think it's overkill. So over the summer, I was looking into Michael Clay Thompson because visually to me, the one sentence a day was very similar. So I purchased the curriculum and what I wanna do is show not pros and cons, but um, similarities and differences between the two and show you side by side. And then we had also, we really liked the well-trained mind, but need to leave it because Michael Clay Thompson is going to take longer. It's more in depth the way you do sentences and the vocabulary. Last year, Morgan wasn't having to look up the vocabulary at all in Fix-It Grammar. This year, she guaranteed is going to have to look up every single word. So there's gonna be dictionary work. She's going to wanna to write it down. We're gonna to need to discuss it. It's going to be too much if we do both Michael Clay Thompson and The Well-Trained Mind this year. So unfortunately, we have to let go of two grammar curriculum that we like in order to pick up one that I think she needs. And it's funny because, you know, just when you think <laughs> you have it, just when you think you got it, um, your daughter changes or your son changes and it's time for something else. And rather than pushing through with what we had and just making do, I don't have to do that. I, I have the one kid and I can cater to that one child according to her changes. And thankfully, because of state testing, because I'd chosen to test her, there was a wealth of knowledge that came out of those tests. And what's the point of testing if you don't do something with those results? And I did something with those results. So with that, I will walk you through and do kind of a side-by-side -side of Grammar Town and fix it grammar what do we have here i'll do town town mouse country mouse because we marked up nose tree that's the one we used and we'll go from there i think it's important to make a couple of points one is if you don't have any experience it doesn't matter if you're seven or 70 this book will work you can open it and be a beginner here it's not necessarily the case here so the next point is these two curriculums are not necessarily laterally transferable. They're not commutative, at least. For instance, if you have used this book before, you can use this one right away. If you have used Fix-It Grammar, it's not, for instance, Town Mouse and Country Mouse is not necessarily laterally transferable to moving on to here. I kind of feel like we could have done just as well with the earlier one. I think the one before this is Island. We could have done Island. I picked this one and mainly because of the vocabulary. So we're going to get through this and I think Morgan will need a little bit more help from me. This is a grab and go for your kid. And here's what you have. You've got the student manual and the teacher's manual. And the teacher's manual can literally, you can walk them through everything, but they're getting the same exact thing as you. The difference is you've got the answers. So this is essentially a key. And the student manual is doubled up. You have the manual and the workbook. It's all in one. So you see, you learn something, and then you flip the page. And for the next week, you practice it. You read it, read the sentence, you mark it with articles and nouns of what you have learned already in the page before. You mark what you've learned 
And then you fix anything that needs fixing, like capitalization and full stops or uh, periods, punctuation, and then you rewrite it. And also you've got your vocabulary. So if you don't, if you don't know a certain word, then you can look it up. And then it, so it builds, you don't per sentence, you don't diagram or mark or analyze every part of speech in every sentence, which is not the case for Michael Clay Thompson. And so you see, as you get further on for week 15, there's a lot more to mark because you've learned a lot more. And then I notice here the who, which clause, I, there was a video or two where people, there were a couple of homeschool moms who were upset with fix it grammar because of who, which clause. And that's apparently not a classically known, it's not a classic grammar term, but I think, and if you have IEW, if you're an IEW structure and style mom, I think this has to do with IEW structure and style in writing. So you'll have to, you'll have to let me know if that's the case, but it makes sense to me. And there's a reason why they're teaching you who, the who, which clause. And so I don't, that was not a problem for us. This can be done, I think, by the student, by themselves every morning for the most part. And then if the child has any questions, you can assist them. And if you can't assist them, then you can go into the manual and review for yourself and then help them with the markings. Now, Practice Town is a little different. Here you've got the manual, which is more like the key. It's the key, essentially. It's got the answers to every single sentence that the child is analyzing. Then you have the student manual. Each one, both Fix-It Grammar and Michael Clay Thompson, teach to the child. So within here, not the teacher's manual, but within the student manual, they can read it and learn. And same here with one, I think, notable difference. These two things, the student manual and the workbook, don't really correlate step by step. So you don't, in, for instance, open here and read about nouns and then work on nouns and then read about adjectives and work on adjectives. Here's the difference. With the student workbook, while Fix-It Grammar had the read it, mark it, what is it? Read it, mark it, fix it, and then write it. Michael Clay Thompson has a different style, which tells the child that they're analyzing the whole sentence every time. So they're analyzing the part of speech, the parts of sentence, phrases, and clauses. And here's where they do that. The part of speech, or the parts of speech, the parts of sentence, phrases, and clauses. So they mark every single portion of the sentence themselves and break it down in four parts. And then the comments are for anything they want to write about. I think it would be um, vocabulary and the, your vocabulary is highlighted here. This is, this is a huge difference though, because I think in many ways, is this the student book? Yeah. In many ways, this is easier because the child doesn't have to come up with the names themselves or know that, oh, well, I only have to find one noun, so they only find one noun. I think this is easier because the kid knows they only have to do this, this, and this, and once they found it, they know that they're done, and they don't have to come up with the terms themselves and analyze the sentence themselves. They're simply finding it and marking it. So this involves... In, in my opinion, Michael Clay Thompson involves a greater, um, a deeper focus on the part of the child and a deeper understanding of the grammar. So initially, if you were to move from here to here, you're going to need patience and probably a little bit of help by the parent to explain or remind the child, this is how you do it. And also, well, what is this again? I can't remember what this is again. They really do have to come up with it on their own but they're not alone because they can look it up. <laughs> it's just all here, every single part. So the first level is parts of speech. And then from page seven to 63 is parts of speech. And then there's level two is parts of sentence. And the parts of sentence you would mark along here. I guess I should get this student. Okay, so we're gonna, we'll, we'll give the parent manual first. 
So they mark the parts of speech. And then when they learn the parts of the sentence, they start doing that. And then level three is writing the phrases, marking the phrases. And then level four is marking clauses. If you've never had, if your child has never had grammar, they're not going to be able to do every single one all in one go. I don't think because you have to go through the whole book to learn it all. And they're not going to read the whole book in one go to be able or to start writing sentence one. So here's what we're going to do. I think as it explains it, the first 25 sentences, you focus on the parts of speech. And then the next 25 sentences, there's 100 of them. There are 100 of them. The next 25, you focus on the parts of the sentence and, and so on. What we will do until Morgan gets the hang of it is we will simply focus on line one, analyzing the parts of the sentence. And then when she gets the hang of it, as we go through Grammar Town and review, because we've already had all of this, but we, we want to review it. We'll, we'll go through the noun and adjective and adverb and verb really quickly. But then later on, there may be some things that we need some help on. So we will continue to go through all of this and re review it. And as we pick things up, Morgan can mark more. In fact, when she really has it, when she starts marking full sentences, if she's really on a roll, then we can always go back to sentence one and say, okay, well, now that you knew, you knew the parts of speech here, but we hadn't filled out the parts of sentence and the um, phrases and clauses, let's go ahead and complete that now that we know that. So there, there are a few ways that you can do it, and it's not necessarily linear, and you can do it any way you want and your child can do it any way they want. But what I really like is here, the student manual, it is so full. It talks to the child. It explains everything. It's so simple. Just like we don't like crowded stuff on paper. And this is great too, because that's not crowded. So visually, this is very similar. And Morgan can just step by step go through all of these things and read perhaps, you know, a couple of pages a day or four or five pages a day until she gets the hang of it. And this is great. I love the visual of what's attached to the noun and what's attached to the verb. Now, to be clear, I think that Michael Clay Thompson requires patience. And also, if you have a child who needs assistance, is not a self-starter with grammar. Mine isn't a self-starter with grammar. Um, she's a self-starter in many other ways, and she was, in fact, really great with this once we discussed the week on Monday, once we discussed the thing that we were going to study, then she was a self-starter each morning with Fix-It Grammar, but not necessarily, I don't think that this is going to be the case until she gets used to reading and reviewing herself and learning the things on her own here. So until she gets there, if she ever does, I don't, it doesn't matter if she does or not until she gets there. I think this won't be a morning routine the way Fix-It Grammar had been a morning routine. I think this is going to be a mom and Morgan type of thing that we work on together, which will be fun because I, I need to learn too. Who's perfect in grammar? I mean, if you are, raise your hand. You won't see, you won't see my raised stand. <laughs> so there's where we are with Michael Clay Thompson and Fix-It Grammar. I think that as a homeschool mom on YouTube, I need to follow through on the things that, that I do or say I'm going to show you. And, and if I forget, feel free to comment and say, hey, weren't you going to do a video on X, Y, and Z? But I want to make sure that I follow through with how we're doing with Michael Clay Thompson and that the change was the right thing for us and how we view the curriculum and, and give a fair review according to how we're using it and what we see. I'm not reviewing anything for whether or not it's good. I think almost all homeschool curriculum that we purchase out there has been beta tested ad nauseum and really very good. It just may not be right for your kid. And I think that's where we come in showing you, if you can't get your hands on a flip through, showing you um, or giving you the information to then decide, oh, that's not going to work or yeah, that's that's 
exactly the right thing for me. So from my homeschool to yours, happy homeschooling. See ya.